Hi, I'm Eric Anderson, and I'm going to read a little section from uh, my book, Bird, uh, which is forthcoming from Bloomsbury's Object Lessons series this Thursday, March 19, um, in the middle of a pandemic, which maybe not the best time to publish a book. Um, it turns out, however, that some birds are pretty good at social distancing, and I'm going to read a little excerpt about that. Um, some of the book is made up of field guide-like entries about individual species, and that's what you'll be hearing right about now. Wandering albatross, Dimidea exulans. Remarkably enough, given that they spend 95% of their lives soaring over open ocean, making the equivalent of, conservatively, more than 150 trips around the planet in a lifetime, Wandering albatrosses not only mate for life, the divorce rate, Noah Stryker reports, is almost zero. And they aren't a short-lived species either. An albatross can easily persist into its 60s, possibly even to 100, which means that many, even most pairs, stay together for 50 years or more. For my part, some 16 years ago, under a large white tent in my parents' backyard, I promised to have and to hold, to love and to cherish, little knowing at 23 what my vows really meant, what it meant, that is, to keep them. The intervening years, while full of consolations and delights, have sometimes become a trial of endurance. Can I, can we, make it through this or that rough patch, in the middle of which it appears to have been one long difficulty? Benefits absent, purposes unclear. What makes it work isn't scientific. Some bonds cannot be explained, or rather, one loses touch with what works in explaining them. As for the harmonious relations of albatross couples, their trick may be how little time they actually spend with one another. The birds lead their own lives, and their globetrotting more than four million miles in a lifetime is always a solitary endeavor. They see their mates at most every other year, miraculously getting together to nest as though it had been scheduled long in advance. They are faithful partners and dutiful parents, and spuriously or not, the resilience of their bonds correlates with their elasticity. No planet would be big enough to stretch them to the breaking point. While it matters that the distances collapse at somewhat regular intervals, it would almost seem in the case of the albatross, the greater the distance, the stronger the bond. With wingspans of nearly 12 feet, the birds live up to their name, or their name lives up to them, in other ways as well. Whereas the ostrich is the largest bird in the world by weight, by wingspan, it's the albatross. And much as the hulking African ratite is an agile runner but impossible flyer, the giant white seabird is graceful in the air but clumsy on the ground, stumbling through takeoffs and landings on the barren, mostly frigid islands in the southern oceans where it nests. Perhaps largeness, whatever form it takes, inevitably requires certain compromises. The greater the size of a person's commitment to another, for instance, the greater the concessions. A marriage demands that spouses surrender some autonomy, that for the good of the enterprise they yield some degree of agency to the other. As an albatross cannot be a great flyer and nimble runner, a married person cannot, at least not without conflict, be a good partner and play the field. But there are limits to the comparisons. An albatross's years, Stryker says, are lived slowly, deliberately, at the pace of an imponderable environment. We live our weighty terrestrial lives far less carefully by comparison, which may explain why fidelity in mammals is ridiculously rare, occurring in only 3% of species. Whereas the textures of our earthbound lives are richly, maybe confusingly varied, there are few distractions in the life of an albatross, which means, Stryker says, and here the implications hit home, the birds concentrate on the things that matter most, such as one another. So, if you liked what you heard, please support your local independent bookstore uh, and this relatively friendly writer, uh, and buy a copy. Um, writers, artists, musicians, um, local businesses, are all going to be hurt pretty hard by this upheaval. Um, so every little bit you can do helps. Thanks.